ông quay cho ông chung đây có cả một tổ cái chấm đại ca này chạy thì sạm là cả cái phía xa đỉnh đầu sạm cho khay cầm lại chấm đi để bị chết lờ thì ông đây ông lo bị tất cả chuyên từ đầu tây cho cầm si vật khai rái làm bài một tổ ca tăng tổng lượng đỉnh đầu tiếp buộc lại chấm đi xong chơi Thank you, President. Uh, Professor Schiffer, in the book Pol Pot Plans the Future, there is a, a document which you introduced and translated, uh, document number four, uh, and it is uh, clearly identified as being from a speech or paper by Pol Pot himself. Uh, the, um, the title of the um, uh, document is Preliminary Explanation Before Reading the Plan by the Party Secretary and it's sourced at the Party Centre 21 August 1976. In the um, preface to the book, uh, it was said that this speech was given at a meeting of the centre in August of 1976 and you say at uh, English ERN 0010457 between 21 and 23 August 1976 at a meeting of the centre not otherwise specified but probably consisting of a select group of CP members assembled in Phnom Penh, the party secretary Pol Pot spoke at length about the party's four-year plan. The speech itself runs to 65 pages, so I'm not expecting you to have memorized it, uh, but there is in it a discussion of the originality of the Cambodian Revolution, the speed at which Socialism must be built because of attacks from the East and the West. The speech also uh, uh, seeks to justify that uh, goals for greatly increased rice production were realistic. Do you recall this document in general? Yes, I do. At that meeting, there uh, some were no, um, members, uh, there were CPK mean, members other than uh, the group you have referred to as a select group of CPK members. Uh, and uh, you stated uh, that some of those attending that meeting had not previously discussed the plan, but that for others, they must have heard the same explanations twice. Uh, and may I assume that you are referring in the latter group to the select group of CPK members? Yes, yes, that's right. And uh, within that select group, would there have been members of the Central or Standing Committees? One would think so, but I have no direct evidence of that, of course. I'm now going to move to some specific um, uh, standing committee minutes that uh, were not included in uh, the book Pol Pot Plans the Future. The first is um, E-217 or is. One three point one zero. My ERN zero 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 seven three six to seven three four a seven four three English zero zero one eight two. Uh, uh, and that is, has the title of <coughs> a record of meeting of the standing committee 11 March 1976. The minutes disclose that it was, uh, 
attended by Nguyen Chia, Ian Sari, and Kim Sun Park. Uh, and that, uh, at the meeting, problems with the Vietnamese on the eastern frontier were discussed, and the opinion of Angkor was given. Now, there are other similar documents, in particular E3-229, recording the minutes of the Standing Committee for the evening of 22 February 1976. A meeting uh, whose record also states that it was attended by the three accused and at which a report on the national defence situation was received and opinions and instructions given by ANCAR. A further meeting of the Standing Committee held on the morning of 14 May 1976 with the uh, document number E3-2. 2221 uh, also recorded the attendance of the three accused and considered a report on the sea borders and an, and an extended summary and direction was given by Pol Pot with brief commentary by Yang Sari. Now I've summarized the minutes of three meetings very briefly. My question is, in the context of these meetings, did the word Ankar refer only to Pol Pot, or could it have a wider meaning and include other uh, CPK members as well? That's an <coughs> excellent question. It's hard to answer. My first impulse is to think that uh, this is a document which, which uh, Pol Pot referred to himself as and Karpel. On second thought, <coughs> it seems to me that the word in this context signifies that the decisions was made uh, at that meeting were made collectively by the organization itself. In other words, the people who were at the meeting. That makes more sense to me than having the meeting refer to Pol Pot as the organization, because that, that just seems like a kind of hagiography that they didn't indulge in. But I have no direct evidence of that, of course, I'm, I'm not, uh, it's just a, an assumption on my part. Uh, another document that I would like you to comment on is the record of a meeting of the Standing Committee on 26 March 1976, uh, and the record states that this meeting was chaired by Nguyen Chia and attended by Kyo Sam Han. The document number is E3-218. During that meeting, Ya gave an extensive report concerning negotiations with the Vietnamese concerning the eastern border, uh, and in those minutes, Nguyen Chia, as Depu Deputy Secretary, is recorded as having given instructions and opinions on the negotiations with the Vietnamese including orders about the use of mines, and that's found at English, ERN 00182657, and as well, the sinking of some Vietnamese boats. Nguyen Chia is quoted in the minutes as saying, with Vietnam, our problems are never-ending. We must combine the political struggle, the diplomatic struggle, and use military force in combination. Uh, does the record of this meeting uh, accord with the accused Nguyen Chia's assessment of himself as saying that politicians, of which he was one, held less power than the military? I think it somewhat contradicts that statement, frankly. In the closing order, uh, document number D427, English ERN 00604548249, Khmer 00605300, to 5302 and French 00624175 to 176. 
the co-investigating judges identified five policies that they said had been designed and implemented by the three accused, uh, as well as other CPK members. Those five policies were, first, repeated movement of the population from towns and cities to rural areas and from one rural area to another, two, the establishment and operation of cooperatives and work sites, three, the re-education of bad elements and the killing of enemies, both inside and outside the party ranks. Four, the targeting of specific groups, in particular the Cham, Vietnamese, Buddhists, and former officials of the Khmer Republic, including both civil servants and former military personnel. And the fifth policy is the regulation of marriage. Uh, based on your research, do you consider these to be among the more or less important policies uh, developed and pursued by the CPK? I think they represent some of the <coughs> more important uh, policies. I would think uh, particularly the first three are crucial. The fourth and fifth seem to me less, uh, less crucial, but uh, still important. Are you able to say from your research when these policies, uh, the period over which these policies might have been developed, uh, and uh, by which organ of democratic Kampuchea, or by which particular person? I don't, think, I don't think any of these policies can be traced to a single person. Uh, the movement of people was decided on uh, uh, as, as a national policy in February of uh, 75, but uh, several towns, including uh, Udong and Krache, had been evacuated previously, so it was a policy that had been tested. Similarly, the um, uh, opening of uh, cooperatives and so on had uh, been inaugurated in uh, so-called liberated territory in 73, particularly in the southwest. Um, the <coughs> going after uh, bad elements had always been a feature of uh, the uh, communist program, but I think it uh, didn't come into uh, it didn't come into uh, operation until the victory of uh, April 17th, when the uh, Lonno uh, personnel were. Uh, uh, singled out. Um, to, uh, the, the targeting of specific uh, uh, sectors of the uh, country. I think the Vietnamese were probably targeted from the uh, from the beginning. Uh, the Cham and I, I'm a little confused about the uh, targeting of Buddhists. I think. Uh, it must mean targeting of uh, Buddhist, uh, I think, monks, uh, people who are just trying to so religion. That term seems ambiguous to me in this context. But uh, the Cham uh, certainly were not targeted from the beginning if they were uh, systematically targeted. And finally, the uh, marriages, um, I'm not sure that that policy took effect before 1976, but I don't have evidence on that. So certainly the first uh, the first two were inaugurated before 75. The third one uh, came into effect with the victory, and the fourth and fifth came later, I would say, except perhaps for the targeting of Vietnamese, which began uh, very, very, very soon. Thank you. Uh, these uh, five policies to which I have referred would uh, uh, based on your research again, of course, would they have been published broadly or explained to the general membership of the Communist Party of uh, Kampuchea or to the people of Cambodia as a whole? In reverse order, I mean, I guess to explain to the Cambodian people as a whole that this would have taken place, some of these uh, policies would have been explained at, at political meetings that were held. Uh, in uh, districts and sectors and zones, but 
the, uh, it would not have been explained as policies of, of a ruling party. The party never identified itself as such to the people at large. Uh, members of the party would have been at various levels, would have been briefed in, in increasing uh, detail as they became higher in, uh, in rank and position. Uh, some of the uh, policies were explained in the party uh, magazine, uh, the uh, revolutionary flags. Uh, but this flow of information was very tightly uh, controlled by the regime and uh, very uh, access to, there, there's no, let me put it another way, there was no discussion, no open discussion of these policies insofar as they were discussed at uh, high-level meetings, we have very little uh, documentary evidence of those uh, discussions. But uh, these were, uh, for instance, I, I don't have high-level uh, documentation for the policy of uh, the arranged uh, marriages, but uh, by and large, I think the leadership knew what it wanted to do. The next levels down uh, heard much of what the leadership wanted to do. As it got further and further down, some of these policies became uh, not very clearly articulated, but uh, still uh, part of everyday life. Thank you. Well, finally, I, I would just like um, you to uh, elaborate on your last uh, answer um, uh, concerning communication of CPK policies. Uh, and you mentioned the Revolutionary Flag magazine. Uh, was that widely circulated uh, along with Revolutionary Youth magazines? No, access to those two journals was limited to uh, party members, and uh, I'm not sure that every party member had his own copy, but certainly no one outside the party was given access to either of those journals. Yes, uh, thank you, Professor Chandler. President, I have no further questions at this time. បាទអរគុណព្រះចក្រមហើយជាកិច្ចបន្តដោយអនុវត្តតាមវិធានកៅសិបនៃវិធាននិងវិធានកៅសួរមួយនៃវិធានទៃក្នុងអបតកនិង
Well, it was no specific research. I think it was a more or less honorary position uh, from which I was able uh, technically to supervise some of the work of graduate students, uh, participate in seminars, and not to conduct any direct teaching, and it was unpaid. Uh, I conducted research on topics that interested me that uh, in that period, uh, but it was not directed by anyone to do towards specific topics. សូមគុណខ្ញុំបានស្ដាប់លើលោកសត្វស្រីចក្រមបានសួរជាអំពីស្ដាប់ដៃរបស់លោកដែលបានលោកប្រធានបានសួរតែតឹងតែនឹងស
I guess it's probably my last book in both senses so of the word, but certainly the most uh, where my primary research has so far stopped. Yes, indeed. Uh, I was invited there by UNHCR in the autumn of 1984 uh, to interview uh, Cambodian refugees who had been uh, singled out by other interviewing sources from the United States primarily as possibly uh, members of the Khmer Rouge and thus ineligible for uh, transfer to uh, a third country. Uh, I conducted about oh, three or four, between three and four hundred interviews at that time with uh, refugees trying to clarify some of their status, their life histories, and so forth. Uh, a very, uh, for me, a very exciting uh, re-entry into the uh, pleasures of uh, speaking Khmer and of meeting uh, large numbers of uh, Khmer, which had not been possible for me uh, in the 1970s and early 1980s. អរគុណលោកសាស្ត្រាចារ្យ <coughs> 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 បាទសូមជ្រាវលោកបទធានសូមជ្រាវភាគីនៃរឿងក្តីគឺថាខ្ញុំបានសួរសំនួននេះគឺតាក់ទន្ទនាងពិតហេតុការណ៍ឡើង
very difficult to write a book that did not uh, have a narrative format, but that was uh, part of the challenge. Uh, and the theme always, I think, of all these books was to discover as best I could what had happened in these either periods of history or the life span of a single man or the operations of a single uh, institution. ຄົນລະສາຊາຊິປູສົນໂນບັນຕໍ <coughs> I started, uh, I guess, let me think, 1975-76, I was uh, as baffled and confused as what was happening in Cambodia, as many other people were, both inside and outside the country. Um, I was curious about what was going on. Uh, I conducted some interviews with some refugees who had come to Australia uh, and could tell me a little bit about the regime. And I, I wrote some fairly tentative uh, articles trying to come to grips with what was uh, being uh, what was going on in uh, about 19... 76, 77, more material is coming clear. I uh, was still not writing as much on the Khmer Rouge as I probably should have done, maybe because it was still so uh, unclear to me what was actually going on. Uh, at a conference in uh, the first time I really started putting my mind to this material, as well as working very closely with uh, Ben Kiernan, who was my graduate student working under my supervision, was a conference that was held in uh, Chiang Mai, Thailand in 1981 that resulted in a book that Ben Kiernan and I edited called uh, uh, Revolution in its Aftermath in Cambodia. This was a conference that drew together several people who were interested in Cambodia, resulted in a book, as I say. And <coughs> from then on, I would say from 81 on, I concentrated almost all my research on uh, the Khmer Rouge period, uh, adding chapters to uh, books that uh, my history book uh, added a chapter to that one about uh, this period and so on. So I guess you could say my interest was sparked from the really from April 75, if not somewhat before, uh, and then uh, research, serious research writing beginning in the early 1980s. Well as, I, oh, sorry. well, as I say, I think I've been concerned about them since uh, they came to power. Uh, I began writing about them in 76, 77, but not in great, great detail, and then from about 1981 on, uh, I would say almost all my research has been on the Khmer Rouge period. ອົກຄຸນລອງສາຊາ <laughs> ខ្ញុំសូមជម្រាបសួរលោកតាក់ទិននឹងសំនួរមួយចំនួនពាក់ព័ន្ធនឹងកាលអត់បើបៃទៅតាមការយល់ដឹងនឹងការចងចាររ
hay dùng xong mà hàng thấy hàng chui mà hàng ai cái sản lực được gọi là con computer, số mà nhà bị lỗ bật thiên mà bật sơn lỗ bật thiên ăn nhạt vậy. Ông nhận nhận nhạt. Ba, cứ ai cái sản để tận tận lực hàng được cả, tập ai từ ai cái sản i bảy slash một trăm sáu mươi ý bay sáng mới sáng sớm ba. Ý sớm lúc đầu tiên lắm ta an, ai kia sáng đi, ai kia mừng sưu 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 I'm not certain that I have. It's not coming back to me clearly as I look at it. Uh, I must have done it at some stage, but I can't clearly recall that. I've read other uh, statute documents, but this particular one I don't. Uh, it's not coming through, through clearly to me in my recollection, I'm sorry to say. <coughs> Lúc tôi biết chân lửa, ai cả xa này cứ chỉ ai cả xa để đụng miền hồng đáy chỉ chỉ bị xa ổng lễ Hay ai cả xa này cứ miền bỏ ra chỉ bày bị xa cứ khám ái hay khám ái là khăn tất cả Bạc mình cầm chiến cứ ai cả xa đám hay chỉ bị xa ổng lễ nên chỉ bị xa bà rằng Chẳng xong lúc người ta ăn ai cả xa này bằng tích hay lúc xong ta chỉ lo cho xong luôn và không nhầm chiếm bằng to đến nít ta That's fine. Thank you. 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 Well, it's to set out uh, in uh, definitive, uh, you would have to say temporarily definitive form because the statutes were often revised and the last uh, one is the one that's uh, considered authoritative, but to set forth the uh, ideas and organization and purposes of the Communist Party of Kampuchea as the governing party of democratic Kampuchea and as a as the uh, instrument of uh, the Cambodian Revolution. អរគុណលោកដាវីតចិនឡាតាមការស្រាវជ្រាវរបស់លោកតើលោកអាចបញ្ជាក់បានអំពីការពិតបានដែរទេថាតើលក្ខណិកៈនេះបានធ្វើស
quân lộ bị chân lỡ khi xong mà lộ thiên ảnh nhạt trong từ cả thạc hành tí pi này là khả năng này bà để miền y ở ấn máy sôn sôn sai sập bốn mà pay pi hai sập bảy đi ở ấn chỉ về sao ông kể sôn sôn đập bẩm bảy sai sập mà pay buồn đi ở ấn chỉ về sao bảo đắng sôn sôn mà pay bẩm bốn mà pay bẩm bốn nâng đập bẩm mười à như số bàn nhà pi lô bát thiên là bảy bằng hai ai cái sao này hay khang người ta chui vào hai ai cái sao này càng không được bạn mà sơn lô thì ăn nhạt องค์จำเรียนอนุญาตปนแต่กายสมรู้ปีกาดับบังฮายไอกษาชีพิสาอังกฤษในเรื่องเอกรองคอมพิวเตอร์หนังตูดตัวสมัยดับชีพิสาข
มันทลอบได้บ้านอ่านไอกสารในจุดมุ่งเตะให้ชายในสมนุติปีกว่าท่าเตะโตนึงไอกสารนี่ก่อนมันอาอัตถาติบายหรือปัญญาตัวเลือกไอกสารนี่เตะบ่าดูชนะแมนบ่าหรือมวยดาบขยมมันมันสลับจุดลำเตะตายังกูอ่านวัดได้รูลิงอภิธิเทียนได้ไอปัญญาได้บ้านดับปีมุ่งเตะโตนึงกะในท่าสะเซยมันได้บ้านเคยไอกสารนามูนุตาเตยยังเตยดอยสารนั่นมาวิญญาณรื้อยังไม่สมอากุลบ่าอากุลนักการคอตมกอลนี่ปัจจัยตำนองลูกมีจีวีมีการพรจะล้มลูกในจุดนี้มันคล้ายฉบับล้อนนะถ้าลูกทะเลาะบันอ่านเนื้อและขันติกะปะกุมณีกัมพูชีปัจจัยการอ่านอัตบอดการกอดอ่านนั่นมันเหมือนอัตบอดโดยคณีนั่งอัตบอดได้บันดะเนื้อจะปูมุกเนื้อเป็นนิตีมันในทำมีการบอกแปลเขาหนีเตอตามดำนาคาในดำนาคาในเตบิธีปนังตีให้จำได้คลำสากดประกอบเชี่ยกดบันชลัยไปเชี่ยให้ถ้ากดบันอ่านเมนเลเลขันติกะปะจังให้บันเชี่ยมันนี้คือตั้งสำรวยจงคร้อยถ้าตากดบันอ่านประทามเตี๋ยตีหรือเอกสารในจมูกหมกนี่อ่านนั่งอ่านหรือเอกสารทำไมเอกสารได้แล้วความดำเนินการตำรวจระเบียบระบบปลายนั่งเขาหนีแต่บันดังตีสมชื่อลูกดมนางทายไปเนี้ยประตอการตั้งสมรู้ประเด็นดาวจำปูเหอะเนี่ยจำนิ่งบาสมกุลลูกเทียนบาให้จุดตอนนี้คือไอเกษาหนึ่งประหารจีเวซาขมายตามกระจกตัวตัวจากไอกรังคอมพิวเตอร์ไอยมจูนไอเกษาจีเวซาเลยตัวลูกดบิดเชนเลอร์ตามการอนุญาตปีลูกเทียนให้ในการเล่นนอบลูกเทียนบาไอจีบตอนนี้กิมสมส่วนตัวลูกดับเบิลเลอร์ได้ให้ทากอดบานชลอยจุ่มเวนหนึ่งองสำนักการพิธาเอากอดบานอาร์อาตบอนนิฮายเอากอดบานดังหรืออาตบอนนิฮายจังยิมสมอันยัดสุบตอติดบทสันจีอาตบอนน่าได้กอดบานเคยบานอ่านเทคยิมพิเยมบรรสูสมบูรณ์ดังที่บ้านลูกดับเบิลเลอร์ยิมสมสูสมบูรณ์แต่ต้นต้นหนึ่งแต่การติดกันนี้ของในลำอัดจีบตอมตอบดีต่อเตยบ้านลูกดับเบิลเลอร์ในขนมเปี๊ยในกระทากันที่ปีนี้ย่อมสังเกตเคยมีเปียได้ปลาในคลองตินนี่คือปะบรรทออักน้อมปะเดวอตสงกุมนิยมนังกอสังสงกุมนิยมต่อติดติดดอยดักมุกดักฮัดนังถาปะกุมนี่ชีอังกาขุ่มพอดอรบบวรณะกัมกอกัมปุชีนังชีอากะบัญชีกาครุบกรงหนึ่งจัดใจการเงียบปฏิบัติต่างๆตอนกันแบบนี้ตลอดอายุจักบานเทอมปีอัตนัยคลำสาแต่เติมเติมหนึ่งกระทาคันนี้ตาตาคือจ้องหนึ่งยืนเรื่องไอ้บทตามการจ้องจ่ายระบบโลกบาทุกการประโยชน์ดังระบบโลกบาทอ s a statement of authoritative statement issued by the CPK that was at that point ruling Cambodia. This is why it has been post 75 after it has totally achieved what it does. So on. It's a statement saying that power really in Cambodia from. Now on, from the time this uh, statute is promulgated to, I guess, largely to party members, uh, that from now on the party has the, as it says, the monopoly on, uh, on social, social and, and the monopoly ability to construct socialism and absolute monopoly in every sector of, so throughout the country. So it's a fairly clear statement of, of a, uh, a, 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 a claim, if you like. Uh, From a position of authority, uh, that this authority is uh, legit, not only legitimate but is also uh, monopolistic. It's the only power that will be permitted to uh, exist in uh, revolutionary Cambodia. ช่วงสองสองโลกเปรียบบันเทมบริษัทในโลกอายเปรียบบ้านแต่ต้นตัวหนึ่งเอาไว้ได้จีกาหยุดดังระบบโลกตามการสร้างสร้างชีวิตระบบโลกเปรียบได้ปลาในขนมกระทาคันนี่คือมีเปรียบสำคัญสำคัญมุ่งจุดด่วนโดยจี
đ ạ c h mục đ ạ c h hạt v i ệ n nước miền đây dạng đ ư ờ n g đất và a t h n đây dạng xây dựng một đ ư n g c ù n non này cao bằng cát cả thác khan đi lá cứ khăn ông bỏ nò với chi sầm khăn và Well, I think it's uh, basically a uh, statement that <coughs> it should be clear. I, I think it's pretty self-evident that what this statute uh, will not welcome is any uh, challenges or uh, changes or suggestions to anything in the statute. I mean, it has a monopoly not only on uh, a monopoly of the power in Cambodia, but a monopoly over the control of information coming out from that power, powerful body. So it's uh, in every sector. That's a very wide, uh, wide term. It's just not allowing any other uh, uh, any other form of power to be exercised in South Country. So it's just it's not to be allowed. It's rather like saying, I think that uh, that the Communist Party was going from then on to be the air that people uh, breathed, rather than a separate. Political body that had nothing to do with people's lives. Got a good little bit, Chandler. Jump up here, the town, on Kak Boom Pot. There's a feeling of Kanga Takani. There's some die mean the young lady. Hi, on Kak Boom Pot. No, 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 Well, again, this is a, a kind of an ambit claim that says uh, we are in charge. We have the power. We are the highest organization. The highest organization of the party, of course, is the uh, <coughs> standing committee and central committee, the secretary and the deputy secretary of the Communist Party. The people who are uh, running the country, who are not specifically identified by name or even by position, but the highest officials in the party are the ones with the authority over. The exercise of the uh, party's uh, activities in Cambodia. l o o k at my dear a u o o n t i t h t r a p a k u m a n i n e n o n g c a m b o d i a but you have a t i e b a Oh, I wish I could really. I mean, it conceived itself, uh, or it, it, the, the kind of people who wrote, the, who wrote this kind of document conceived that this party would be absolute and unchallenged and uh, unambiguous and uh, identifiable to party members throughout the, uh, the uh, country. This would be uh, an unchallenged uh, and uh, definitive document that would say how things would operate under the party's uh, <coughs> considered to be uh, enlightened uh, leadership. Of course, uh, how your question, how the party operated, uh, when you start using a phrase like that, you're getting into uh, the real world rather than in the world of uh, these ambit claims of authority made by the party. Uh, I don't think any. A uh, political body has ever been able to act with the kind of absolute uh, unchallenged and unquestioned and unambiguous uh, power that this paragraph we've been talking about uh, mentions. But in fact, this is not a document that is going to uh, admit uh, uh, nuance, uh, the, the faintest uh, chance of uh, error or the faintest chance that this. Set up of the party's absolute power in all spheres and all sectors uh, could be, uh, in any sense, uh, something that was not going to occur in the real world. In other words, it's not going to say uh, make a difference between what's in the statute and what's happening. There should be no difference between this in their view. But of course, your question is how did it operate? As soon as you get into that operations question, you're in. To the whole uh, real 
history of uh, decay that's a phenomenon that's uh, still evolving that I have no claim to any genuine authority about, but one that I think many people in this room have, uh, have studied with care and are still coming up with new ideas. សូមអរគុណនៅប្រធានខ្ញុំសូមអនុញ្ញាតមកតទៅអត្តបទកថាខាងទីប្រមួយដណ្ដើរប៉ុន្តែស្រង់យកពីអរអិនលេខជាពិ
អ្នកជំនាញរូបនេះបាទអរគុណច្រើនលោកមេត្តាវីម៉ៃខលកណ្ណវ៉ាស់នៅការកត់ទំគល់ <coughs> នៅលើខ្លឹមសារនៃសកលតាំងសំណួររបស់លោកមិនក៏បីអញ្ជើញលោកសាសចានៃចំណេញប្រវត្តិសាស្រ្តឬប្រវត្តិវិទូសកលល
lúc đó biết chân lớn nhưng xong xua lúc xong lúc chơi bạch chạc với cả bóng phư tam ca dụ đang là bỏ lúc tệ tân tân năng sức bỏ bạc chân nó không bạc cùng đi và nó không nâng cư miên ở dưới ẩm phí và chiếc tay của một đồng chân ca sẵn rách sức bỏ bạc chân nó không ca sẵn rách ta miên luôn chẳng nay chẳng được đánh được không ca sẵn rách bài của ca và chiếc tay của một đồng Well, of course, I was never there to observe it, so I'm not sure, but the phrase here to consider, discuss, and join in decision-making, uh, that sounds fine, but I think was hinted at in this paragraph, and I'll take in what the uh, defense counsel has been saying. I'm not an expert in uh, political philosophy at all. I've worked on it, but I'm not an expert. It seems to me what they're saying is, but any party affairs are not in the hands of all the members, but party affairs can be discussed by members uh, according to the principle of democratic centralism, which means in accordance with uh, directives and suggestions that have come down to them from above. I mean, this is my, my interpretation. Uh, it's, it's, it's really not I don't, don't think this is uh, quite, quite appealing, if you read it just uh, quickly, appealing uh, paragraph is meant to suggest that ordinary members can interfere with the administration of Cambodia when they feel, uh, you know, uh, that, that they have a right to do so. But, again, only, seems to be only the party members to start with are entitled to talk about party affairs. People who aren't in the party don't even know what these affairs are. So party members are... So that's, that's one level of discussion. And these discussions would then move up to the next level, and some of the findings of the lower level would be discussed and discussed and passed on. It could well be that all these discussions would come to nothing when you get to the centralism part of the, of the phrase. But it could also be that some of these decisions and thoughts would come up to that, oh, says the leadership. In that case, maybe we have to do some alterations. And the alterations, when they came down, would have the force of law, the force of, of that would be what, what happened. And if the discussions at the lower level were thrown out, the party people had to go along with that. That's it. We, we made our point. Now it's come down as well. The uh, uh, anecdote of the phrase, about the phrase democratic centralism was rather fit into this discussion. There was a Czechoslovakian joke in the 1970s. A son asked his father, what's democratic centralism? And the father said, I'll tell you, you go down in the courtyard of our apartment, stand there. The boy stood there. The father spat out the window and hit the boy on the head. And the boy said, what? He said, now, you spit up. That's uh, a joke manufactured by people who were living in this kind of regime. That's the way they interpreted it. The people didn't like it. Interpreted democratic socialism in that, in that fashion. Mr. President, if I may be heard, I didn't wish to be Clearly, the gentleman but, uh, uh, is not competent to discuss uh, this particular document, at least not in the way to answer the questions that are being posed. Uh, he's being asked to interpret, and again, once we saw, what, what we saw was a legal interpretation, and in my opinion, if you, if you look at the answer, it's based on a great deal of speculation. He's a historian. He's read documents. He can describe what he believes what was going on. De facto, as opposed to being asked as if he were a constitutional scholar to interpret the statute and what it meant. Now, if, for instance, I may assist the other side, if, for instance, they wish to read out a passage and say, de facto, is there any evidence that how this operated, I would not be on my feet. 
then he could discuss based on his knowledge of reading documents and uh, his interviews. But where he's being asked to interpret a document as such, he's being asked to give an opinion as an expert, he's engaging in a great deal of speculation. And what happens in Czechoslovakia or someplace else, I care not. How other, uh, other regimes operate, I care not. He's here to discuss matters uh, concerning uh, this particular country at a particular period of time. Thank you. Mr. President, as, as this issue might come up um, as we go along in, in consultation with my colleague, I just wanted to give um, our position. Um, I think the, the professor's answer best illustrates the uh, probative value of his opinion. Uh, he wasn't speculating. He was, in fact, opining on how this particular principle uh, may have been implemented in practice. And he talked about uh, discussion and information flowing upwards, uh, then uh, party centre looking at uh, input and deciding and passing down those decisions as law. Um, of course, the professor is here to discuss uh, the history of democratic Kampuchea and the CPK. He is opining on the CPK statute. Um, and I think it is entirely within his expertise, and it is an appropriate uh, question to put to him. <laughs> ហើយអង្គជំរះបានប្រកាសទទួលស្គាល់នៅការកត់ <coughs> ការចោទប្រកាន់ដល់ទំនួលទំលាយនៅក្នុងវិសាលភាពសំណុំរឿងសូនសូនពីរឆ្លះសូនមួយជាវាងត្រឹមតែ สกใดจมตั๊ตรึถือมุ่นเปลสะใสหรือเนี่ยจํานิญดอลสะไคกรรมมันแม่นจําดอลสะฉลายเปะดอลจํานาวจิตจอบหรือเปะกันดาลตี
ຫນ່ວຍສາມສັບນາທີຂອງຊຽນນີ້ອັນຈຶ່ງຈຸລວິ່ງ Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, uh, some awkward uh, moments, Mr. Nguyen, Chiam, would like to follow the proceedings this afternoon from the holding cell we have prepared the way of it. Thank you, Mr. President. 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 ແລະຕາມບັນຈຸລະລຽບບັນສຶດມັນຈະລວມສໍານາກາໃນ <coughs> 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 <coughs
ในปีนี้องค์จิมเรบันสำหรับทำการสำหรับสมเด็จพันเตอร์ทุกการกดตุ่มกอลท่าสำหรับระบบลูกคือเตอร์แต่ปีครูหยุบอลจิมวยหนึ่งกองไกลบอลลูกเจาะฉบับให้หนึ่งบางฮ่าอย่างปีมูลเฮดเจาะฉบับให้มูลเฮดหนึ่งเป็นเมนเรื่องตัวใดตัวใดอนุทีเตอร์แต่เมียนมูลเฮดสมรุมได้เอาองค์จิมเรบันมูลท่านองค์การพิจารณาสำหรับอย่างปีปัญหานี้บอกผมโดยฉนตีคืออองค์ยมแรกนั่งพิจารณาติดตามในชั้นเทียนุสต์บักลุ้นในขนมกาอันนี้ได้มันมีมูลเฮดหรือก็มูลเฮดได้เราได้เราได้ได้ขมิ้นพอตังบังเจาะให้จงกรอยมุกอบอยอันเรียบที่คุ้มแข็งนอมครวนจุดจับเจ้านวลชี้นั่งคิวสมพลตะการประตุคุ้มครวนขังกรอมสาธารณการนี้ได้รสเซียนิตกอยลูกนวลชี้ทันในขนมบรรทุกได้เรียบจำตุกสำหรับยันนึ่งอาชีพสตรัทเนี่ยอุปกรณ์สอดตู้สำหรับกวาดไอโจรูมกับจำนาการสำนาการปีจำง่ายให้ได้ไล่โยคิสมพรเอาน้องคนกวาดมากันประตุสำนาการเนี่ยนี่เป็นเยาวบันมุนมองมวยสามสมนตีรัสเซียนี่สมรจ้อสมเชยกรอกช็อ